Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, as I'm building up another engine, I thought I would have as a separate topic retrofitting a power spark electronic ignition distributor in place of the old system. So what I have done is I have bought D17H and DLB198 distributor and coil. Okay, so what sort of thing are we going to be replacing? Right, if you have a very early type 1600 Volkswagen or 1200 Beetle or anything and so on, you will have 0.6 ignition. Can you see that? With little points. And we'll go over, not too much swing, I hope. And we can see that this is what this engine is currently running points and condenser SVDA single vacuum diaphragm advanced going into the side of the car as you can see there's lots of bits and pieces here all blocked off and that is one of the reasons we're fitting a uh, an electronic distributor coil is just sitting down there for the moment okay now that's one type then the next type is a DVDA distributor. Look, double. One at the front, one at the back. And it's actually a double diaphragm in there. It's quite sophisticated. And as you can see, there is a plug. It has got a rotor and a captor. This is um, an anti-over speed distributor never a very good idea anyway uh, that was the condenser that went on the this is look that goes on there you see right that goes back in the box the way. so and this and this distributor fitted this ignition system and here we have the DV here we have the loom which connects the distributor to an ignition amplifier Fairchild made in the USA, Volkswagen and so on chunky piece of aluminium, there's a heat sink and then we have the famous idle control box All right, this is supposed to stabilize the idle that tick over because the whole system was designed to run as lean as possible on tick over to qualify for um, uh, uh, California emissions from 1974. This sort of carburetor, the PIC 344, was fitted to 74 Beetles and various other creatures. Now, so this plug goes in here. This is the awful earthly. This is the one that breaks and your system dies. Then this is supposed to plug into there and there but as it never works everybody just plugs one end to the other and shorts that out and then here is the amplifier box and as you can see it's all a bit you know complex and the idea was that with this DVDA and having quite a complex air cleaner See, look, this is the air clean, oops, that sits on top of the carburetor there. And it had all sorts of uh, vacuum devices for preheat and also for damping the whole throttle. Okay, so the uh, this type of distributor, this type of carburetor had all this return valve or anti 
anti uh, cut off as it were and as you can see it's all been reduced and cut off to a minimum uh, that's for the servo and by the way if you are reducing everything to a minimum if you've got an air takeoff a vacuum takeoff to drive the air system and you're taking that off you'll need to blank that off okay now then let's come wandering back let's have a look at this shiny new distributor all right first thing it's got the rubbish um washer what you need is a d washer you see it's flat on the inside and round on the outside that goes into place afterwards uh the leads are not very long and so consequently and so consequently in order for the distributor to fit there i think we're going to be fitting the coil here which in fact was the original mounting point for these uh, on the very early CT engines, which is handy, Harry. Okay, so <coughs> Ooh, there we are. There's the sensor. Lovely. All right, we're not going to mess around with that. Now, we're going to have to fit the uh, timing clamp, which I need cleaning, obviously. We're going to fit the D washer. Uh, so I'm going to get on ahead and do that, and then I'll get back to you when we're ready to go. Okay, so now we're looking at the distributors upside down. We've taken off the little washer, the round washer, and we're going to be fitting a flat, it looks D washer, it's flat on the inside, round on the outside. And before we do that, we drop that down. And then you've now got to work the D washer over. I think you probably twist it up a little bit, but as long as you get it round the right way when it's on the end. There you go. That's round the right way. And let's just check yes look there we are you see that's now around the right way it doesn't slide about and this is going to be our distributor position roughly so let's make life easy for ourselves what i have done is i've run the engine just for a couple of minutes right and what we're going to do because we're changing this distributor out we're going to bring the the rotor arm round to the number one position and then that way we will know pretty well where we are on this one so what i'll do is look i'll put that down there you stay there right and we're going to bring the timing round but anyway you know there we are we're on right so um, I've positioned the coil with my favourite medication. Uh, um, so this is the plus side, and as you can see, it's got three terminals: one, two, three, and that's the negative. So even in the dark, you could find it. And what I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to pass the wires with a protective shroud so that they look nice and neat and they're out of the way. Um, distributor itself, right? So it's lined up on number one. I've lined up 
sort of equivalent to what the other one was. Sort of <coughs> pull that out. Uh, if you see what I mean, you see it's looking like that. So it's all about there, all right? Oops, something like that. You see, I've got it. It's a roughly aligned up. Hopefully enough to be able to start. But so we now the the distributor cap only goes on one way. Look, you, see, you think it's on. You think it's on. It's you think it's on. It's not on. It's not. On, it's on. Clunk. It's on. This is going to be number one plug. Okay, by convention, one, four, three, two. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, before I take off the old coil, I'm going to just start the motor. Before I take off the old coil, I'm going to start the motor with the old distributor. And then once it's warmed up, and we'll take this bit off, we'll put on the new distributor, and we'll have to wongle it around a bit to get it to start and run. And then we will check it with the strobe on the timing marks. Uh, Okay, well, I'll get that prepared and uh, I'll see. Right, so now the engine is running on the new distributor, but this clamp has to be tightened. Now we have the engine to the lower RPM. The vacuum advance, the SVDA, the vacuum advance, is disconnected. And the vacuum take off the carburetor is in fact connected to a vacuum gauge to show that we are pulling vacuum in that black area, which is what we want on tick over, that we're actually getting a signal. And for the timing, a little bit short of what there we go. Right, so there we are pretty much. We're back on the vacuum gauge disconnected. Uh, we're back on full internal. Pick up. Now the RPM has picked up because I'm running it at. There you go, you see, when it's slow. Well, so there we are. Running nice and steadily. Um, this is about the tick over I'm going to have it when it actually goes into the vehicle. So there we are, our nice new distributor. Everything looking tidy, that's got to be glued in place. And there we are. I hope that pleases you. Thanks for watching.